Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Over a thousand years before the birth of Christ, the Israelites were drawing up battle lines with the Philistines. The Philistines marched from the west, the Israelites marched from the east, and they encamped, one over here, one over here, on opposite sides of the valley of Elah, about 14 miles west of Bethlehem. The battle didn't follow the usual course. The armies did not come together and clash in the war zone. Instead, as it says in 1 Samuel chapter 17, there came out from the camp of the Philistines a champion named Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubits and a span, that is about nine feet nine inches tall. There was a helmet of bronze on his head. He wore bronze scale armor on his body, had a bronze javelin between his shoulders and bronze coverings on his legs. He would have looked something like a great fiery dragon. This strong man stood and called out to the ranks of Israel, Why have you come out to draw up battle lines for war? Am I not a Philistine? And are you not servants of Saul? Choose a man for yourselves and let him come down to me. If he is able to war with me and strike me down, then we will become your slaves. But if I prevail against him and strike him down, then you shall become our slaves, and you shall serve us. And the Philistines said, I defy the ranks of Israel this day. Give me a man, and let us war together. When Saul and all Israel heard these words, they went to pieces and were greatly afraid. This scaly monstrosity was too much for them. Fourteen miles east in Bethlehem was a shepherd, the son of an aged father. The shepherd's name was David. His three eldest brothers had gone after Saul to the war, and David, who had been a musician in service of the king, returned to Bethlehem to shepherd his father's flock. He led the sheep in the green pastures and beside the still waters, but on the front lines, for 40 days, the Philistine took his stand, morning and evening. A Lenten season passed, and the enemy continued to defy God's people. Then the father sent his son to nourish and visit his brothers. Jesse sent David with grain and bread, saying, Carry them quickly to the camp, to your brothers. Visit your brothers to see if they are well, and bring some token from them. The son bore what his father had commanded him, and went. David came to the encampment, the ring of wagons, as the host was marching to the battle line and shouting the war cry. David ran quickly to the ranks and found his brothers and asked them if they were well. As he was talking with them, Behold, the champion came up from the ranks of the Philistines, the Philistine named Goliath from Gath. He brazenly defied the ranks of Israel, and David heard him. All the men, when they saw this man, fled from his face and were greatly afraid. There were no match for this proud giant. But David began asking the men, Who is this uncircumcised Philistine? that he should defy the ranks of the living God. The people repeated David's words to King Saul, and the king summoned him to his presence. David said to the king, Let not the heart of man fall on account of him. Your servant will go and war with this Philistine. Now this would have seemed laughable if David hadn't been so earnest. Saul said to him, you are not able to go to this Philistine a war with him, for you are a youth, and he has been a man of war from his youth. But David answered, Your servant was a shepherd for his father among the sheep. And when the lion came, or the bear, and took up a sheep from the flock, then I went out after him, 
and struck him down, and I delivered it from his mouth. And when he arose against me, then I seized him by his beard, and I struck him down and killed him. Both the lion and the bear your servant has struck down, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be like one of them, for he has defied the ranks of the living God. The Lord who has delivered me from the hand of the lion and from the hand of the bear, he will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. Saul said to David, Go, and the Lord be with you. Now, whether it was because Saul was concerned for David's safety, or whether he simply wanted David to look the part of the warrior, we don't know. Whatever the case, Saul insisted that David put a helmet of bronze on his head and scale armor on him, dressing him up like the enemy, fighting fire with fire. But David was not used to such things. He said, I am not able to go in these. So David took them off of himself. He laid aside the form of the mighty warrior and said, I will go to battle as a shepherd. Then he took his staff in his hand and chose five smooth stones from the brook and put them in his shepherd's pouch. And his sling was in his hand, and he approached the Philistine. The Philistine came near, and when he saw David, he despised him. I call for a warrior, and you send me this? This is a boy! And Goliath said to David, Am I a dog that you come to me with staffs? And the Philistine cursed David by his God, and said, Come to me, and I will give your flesh to the birds of the air and to the beasts of the field. But David replied, You are coming to me with sword and with spear and with javelin, but I am coming to you in the name of the Lord Sabaoth, the God of the ranks of Israel, whom you have defied. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hand, and I will strike you down and take away your head from you. And I will give the corpses of the camp of the Philistines this day to the birds of the heavens and to the animals of the earth. And all the earth shall know that Israel has a God. And all this assembly shall know that neither with sword nor with spear does the Lord say. For the war belongs to the Lord, and he will give you into our hand. And there we stood, watching. Pray it. Psalm 123. Have mercy on us, O Lord, have mercy on us. For we have had more than enough of contempt. How long the scaly dragon has boasted in his pride. How long we have suffered the corruption that came from his first attack in the garden. How long we have been sinners cowering before our enemies. How long we have awaited a savior. And now he comes. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. The son of David approaches in his humility. He has laid aside the form of God, and he has taken on the form of a slave. He has not sword, nor spear, nor javelin, but blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Jesus rides to the war zone as the representative of God's people. And we hail our kid and take up the cry, Hosanna to the son of David. Goliath approaches Mount Golgotha from the west and watches as Jesus comes trudging up from the east, like the sun rising out of Eden. But Jesus doesn't look the part. The devil beholds him and despises him. Am I a dog that you come to me with staffs? I'll crucify you on them, and give your flesh over to death and decay. The devil expected more, but we dare not make that mistake. Jesus came exactly as we needed him to come, and he did exactly what we needed him to do. His royal power disguised he bore, a servant's form like ours he wore, to lead the devil captive. Then came the clash. 
The Philistine arose and went and drew near to come against David. Meanwhile, David made haste and ran to the line to come against the Philistine. And David sent forth his hand to his pouch and took from there a stone. And he slung it, and it struck the Philistine in his brow. And the stone penetrated into his brow, and he fell upon his face to the earth. So also the son of David sent forth his hand to the cross, and the stone that the builders rejected smashed into Satan's face. The strong man lies sprawled on the battlefield, and our stronger man has accomplished salvation. He has saved us from the clutches of the devil. He has saved us from the threatening perils of our sins. He has saved us from everlasting death. But what of him? Has Goliath made good his taunt? Was the flesh of Christ devoured by the birds of the heavens and the beasts of the earth? Certainly not. The son of David says in Psalm 16, My flesh also dwells secure, for you will not abandon my soul to Sheol, or let your Holy One see corruption. In the end, our champion stands alive and well upon the dying body of the enemy. And the day is coming when he will draw Goliath's own sword from its sheath and take away his head. Now what should we take to heart from all this? First, we ought to recognize, especially during this week of weeks, our complete and utter helplessness before the enemy. We not only stood in need of a savior on a Palm Sunday long ago, but we stand in need of a champion and a savior every day. Satan may be defeated, he may be mortally wounded, but he is still very much alive. He has our own sinful flesh as one of his strongest allies, and the world still very much heeds his voice. But second, we have confidence that Jesus has not merely come to visit mankind once and deliver us. His Father continues to send him, saying, Take this bread to your brothers and visit them. And so we sing that Palm Sunday hymn every Sunday. Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And Jesus comes, bringing no mere bread, but his very body given for us. Jesus continues to come and deliver us, rescuing us from sin and death and the power of the devil, giving us forgiveness of sins and life and salvation. And finally, we take to heart that Jesus deals with us in very plain and ordinary ways. He didn't come in a bronze helmet and scale armor. Instead, he became obedient unto death, yea, the death of a cross. The devil despised this mundane, nature of Christ. And yet that was the devil's downfall. We don't let the mere appearance of things fool us. Rather, we glory in the crucifixion of Jesus, knowing that it is his mightiest work. We bow before bread and wine because we know it is the body and blood of Christ. In the same vein, the order of service may not seem particularly exciting. But we know what great treasures Christ gives us here. Your life may seem quaint and plain with simple routines and not much in the way of adventure or excitement. And yet we don't go looking for more. But we delight in our everyday vocations. And we rightly regard them as high callings from God. The death of Jesus teaches us that if we want something extraordinary, then we should go looking for it and the very ordinary things that Christ has bestowed on us. If we want something special, we will find it in something apparently mundane. Salvation in a dying man. Eternal life in bread and wine. Heavenly treasures in simple words. So David prevailed over the Philistine, the sling and the stone. Amen. The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guards your hearts and your minds.